So today we're going to start talking about free markets and supply and demand and price and how it all works together in a free market economy. In the last lesson, we learned a little bit about the two economic systems, command and free market. And today we're really going to dig, dig deep into free markets, which is the command, uh, which is the economic system that America uses. So we know that in a command economy, prices and supply are all set by one person or one group of people, and that can cause some problems. In a free market society, it's set by individuals through a process of supply and demand. But how does that work? How do these things work together to set price? Is it a guessing game? Do they just ask a magic eight ball? There are certain rules and certain laws that we can look at and then we can graph them in a very visual way so that you can see exactly what happens when you shift supply or shift demand and it's, it's really pretty cool but today we're going to focus on the real basics on what is supply and what is demand. So what is supply? Supply is how much is produced or how much is made. So it's looking at the producer when he's determining how many cars to make or how many shoes. And the law of supply says that as the price increases, the producer will make more. Well, think about it this way. If I make a pair of shoes and you're willing to pay me $5 for those shoes, I might make one or two. I'm making a little bit of profit. But if you're willing to pay me $30 for those same amount of shoes, that's a lot of profit. So I'm going to make more because I'm making a much higher profit. So as the price falls and I'm making less profit, there's less incentive for me to make them. So I don't make as much. So you have to think of the law of supply as from a uh, producer's point of view. I want to maximize my profits. So let's look at this on a graph. If you're unfamiliar with graphs, I'll explain the graph a little bit. You've got a y-axis, and a y-axis runs up and down, and that's always going to be your price in economics. Price is always marked on the y-axis. The x-axis in economics is always going to be the amount provided, right? So five shoes, ten shoes, that is going to be across the x. So if we're going to graph supply, we would graph it as an upward slope, as an upward curve. And the reason being is because as you move up that curve, you're increasing price, right? You're going from $5 all the way up to 30. And as you move up the curve, you're moving, you're also increasing the amount supplied. So if you look at this, you can read this graph. At $5, I'm making five shoes. But as I go up in price and I get to 30, for $30, I will make 30 shoes. So the, as price increases, I also increase the amount produced. That's the law of supply. So what is the opposite side? The law of demand. Demand is how much is being bought. And you're probably a little bit more familiar with this side being a student. You're familiar with buying uh, shoes and buying clothes or, and movie tickets. You probably do a lot of the, this side. So what does the law of demand say? The law of demand says as price decreases, demand goes up. And as price increases, demand goes down. And that makes sense. If you think about it, if you go into a store and something's on sale, you're going to buy more of it. You might buy one for yourself and one for your friend. But if it goes, but if you go into a store and the price of something is high, you might only buy one. So we can also graph this. And we graph this as a downward curve because as we move down the curve and down in price, we're moving out in the amount demanded. So we, if we see that at a price of 30, we're only going to buy five because that's a little bit expensive. But as the price falls, and we, we are going to demand more. We'll ask for more the cheaper it gets. That's the law of demand. So here's where it gets fun. We can put these together and we can move 
we can shift demand and shift supply to find out what the market will bear, where the price is going to be. And we call this equilibrium, where supply and demand cross and we get our price or what people are willing to pay for the amount supplied, we get what's called equilibrium. So in this graph, we can see that people are willing to get about two and a half of a product for, they're willing to pay two and a half for about, let's say, 35. So 35 for two and a half dollars. That's your how we get your price or what the market will bear. And in future lessons, what we're going to do is we're going to learn, well, what affects demand? What causes demand to go up and what causes demand to go down? And how does that affect where, um, the, where supply and demand cross and how does that affect price? And that's why it's really important to understand this graph because if you don't understand how this graph works, you're going to get confused in later lessons. So make sure you understand that demand is downward sloping supply is upward sloping, and that price always runs up and down on the y-axis, and quantity always runs across on the x. And as we move forward in lessons, we'll start moving things around, and it'll start getting real exciting, I promise. So let's just look at some real-life examples. Um, this should be pretty familiar to you, um, just from a consumer and a, uh, from a consuming standpoint, but just to give you an idea of how it is in real life, let's say it's Christmas. And people must have the newest phone, right? Everybody's got to have the iPhone or the new Droid. And because consumers are willing to pay such a high price at Christmas for the phone, producers are pushing out lots of phones, right? Because they're everybody's buying. It doesn't matter. We've got to have it. It's Christmas. $500 for a phone, she's got to have it. But what happens after Christmas? So consumers overestimated an amount that consumers wanted, right? They they were overzealous. They've got too many phones. So they put the phones on sale, right? They want to, they start lowering the price. And as consumers lower the price and produce less, right, because they're not making as much profit, consumers are going to buy more of the product. So the demand is going to be there because the price is lowered. So you can see all of this happening in real life, which is what makes economics so exciting.